I'm not going to take any time because you know I have a lot of words and I don't want to take any more time from you. But I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless the, the South Africa, the fire that you South Africans bring. And, um, and we'll pay attention to the words that you share, whatever they may be, and we'll receive with a whole heart. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, as a prophet, when people invite you back, then you know you did something right. <laughs> Because sometimes you're not always sure, you know. But um, I just, this weekend was just amazing. I know I have a very short time. I'm very conscious of that. Like 10 minutes, I think. <laughs> For a, to tell a prophet she only has 10 minutes, it's really hard. Because I have lots of words. <laughs> but I just want to say that this weekend was absolutely amazing. And, um, and just to bring what we carry in Africa to South Florida was just such an honor and such a privilege. And I want to stand here in turn and just honor all of you for what you have here and what you host here and the presence that you carry because it is phenomenal. It honestly is phenomenal. It really is. And that sense of community, that sense of family, that sense of, of a strong um, sort of devoted love for each other is really, um, it's, you, you can feel the weight of the 20 years that have been put into this place. Like you can feel the weight of that in the spirit. I can feel the weight of that, the holiness of that in the spirit. And um, I've, God has given me a few words over the last few years for sort of more kind of global words, but I feel to release just one or two of them here because I feel like they apply to you. So. A couple of years ago, God dropped the word convergence into my spirit, and I wasn't 100% sure what he meant by that at the time, but he's very gracious and kind, and he waits for me to catch up often. But, um, but and I brought this word at our um, home church at the time in Cape Town, South Africa, um, but what he was saying to me was he, was, he said, Sally, we are in one of the most significant decades in time since Jesus walked the earth one of the most significant decades in time since Jesus walked the earth. And I was a little bit taken aback by that, and I said to him, God, it, that feels almost sacrilegious to say that out loud. And he said to me, just as well I said it and not you. <laughs> he was like, when it comes from me, it's okay. <laughs> but there's just a, an incredible expectation for this decade and so there's a, a there is a, a call in the spirit to be so intentional to actually not just be living a day by day but to be looking ahead to the future and looking ahead to what it is that God is calling you to step into and walk out over the years that are left in this decade but he said to me that it is going to be a convergence of Kairos time and Kronos time it is going to be a decade where God moves sovereignly where he brings his Kairos time and he imposes it on our Kronos time and he moves sovereignly to set things in place for what he is bringing in the future. So whatever it is that is happening, it is God is actually going to move kind of almost, I got a sense of like with or without us, you know, it's like, are you coming or are you not? Are you in or are you out? You know, that kind of a thing, but he's moving sovereignly. And so, you know, there is that scripture uh, that Jesus said, you know, you will, there will be war and rumors of wars, but do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And there is a global shaking happening. There is a global shaking happening. And God is shaking systems. He's shaking nations. He's shaking governments. He's shaking monarchies. He's shaking everything because there are things that we have had faith in that were not God. And we, as believers, we stand and we say our faith is in God alone. And then our financial systems or our nations are shaken and we suddenly realized that we had a lot of faith in the way things actually were and that our faith was not only in God alone but God is raising up a remnant whose faith is in him alone he is raising up a remnant that cannot be shaken when their governments are shaken or their nations are shaken or their homes are shaken or their church systems are shaken he is raising up a remnant who will be his warrior bride until the end of time and will bring his kingdom 
to earth the way he has called for it to be brought to earth. That is what he is doing in the earth at the time. And everything is chaos and things, there is no, no <laughs> there is so much chaos in my continent, in Africa, in my nation, South Africa. There is so much to be afraid of. There is so much to have fear about. There is so much to be concerned about. And God is like, no, this is not a time to be afraid. This is the time to stand firm in me. This is a time to stand up. This is a time when I call my children to step up and to step forward and to step into everything that I have for them. And this is a word for you guys, for this incredible community that you have built and you have stewarded here. You know, when the in Luke 24, when Jesus was walking along the road to Emmaus with those disciples, and they were talking to him, and they were telling him everything that had happened, how things had changed for them. They had the Savior, this Messiah, this man that they recognized as the Son of God, and they had watched him be crucified, and the, he had prophesied his own resurrection, but they had not seen that in the natural yet. They had not seen that resurrection in the natural yet. They were living in the tension between life and death, in the tension between crucifixion and resurrection, in the tension between kingdom now and kingdom still coming. They were existing in that tension, and for that moment in time, they could not recognize the Savior who walked with them along the road to Emmaus. And you'll remember the verse where they said, did our hearts not burn within us? Did our hearts not burn within us? But do you know that in the Aramaic, the word for burning is the same as the word for dull. And so that verse could have been translated as where our hearts not dull within us. But it was, but it, <laughs> what I'm saying, what I'm putting it to you, when I spoke with the Lord about that particular scripture, he was saying to me, Sally, there is a choice. You can choose for your heart to burn or you can choose for your heart to be dulled. When you stand in the tension, in the in between the here and now and the what is coming, and you are unsure of what is coming, you can choose for your heart to burn within you or you can choose for your heart to be dulled and disappointed and despondent and concerned concerned and afraid and worried about what is coming. And this community, this incredibly honoring, holy, significant space, you stand on the cusp of great change. You stand on the cusp of being a community that gets to pioneer a new way, the new thing that God is doing, the new thing that God is doing. And the question God is asking you today is, do your heart burn within you? Do your heart burn within you? Are you choosing the burning? Are you choosing the fire? Are you choosing the path that you might not know where you're going, but you just know you're going? with Jesus? Are you choosing to live unafraid? Are you choosing to live in that space, that incredible space where you don't see exactly what the future looks like, but you know God has got it because you know who God is, because you know who God is. And I just feel just in this moment to just honor Darren and Wendy. I met them for the very first time the other day. <laughs> I met them for the very first time the other day, but I just feel so strongly. In fact, in worship, when I was, I was just so overwhelmed by the presence of God, and I just felt, I feel as though the whole of heaven just honors the two of you today, like the whole of heaven just celebrates the two of you, your obedience, your sacrifice, the cost that you have walked through to, 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 to birth this incredible community, and I feel as though God is saying to the two of you, he's saying the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. You have walked in such obedience to me, and it is time for your heart's desires to be realized. It is time for the things that burn inside of you, for you to see them come into fruition. I feel him saying, are you ready to adventure with me? Because the adventure is not over yet. The adventure is still to come, and there is such a sense that, that heaven is like, it's like amped, you know, it's like, it's all in, in anticipation and it's waiting and the angels are like, Jesus, when is this going to happen? When are this gorgeous couple going to just step into this incredible next season? And I feel like you're on the cusp of that in the same way that the rest of you are on the cusp of something great, but the adventure is coming and the desires that God planted in your heart years and years and years ago, you are going to step into the fullness of those things in the years to come. And it's going to be amazing and incredible 
incredible. And the fruit that is going to be credited to your account for this incredible place that you have birthed, this community that you have stewarded so well and loved so well, that is fruit that is credited to your account. But there is more still coming. There is more harvest. There is more fruitfulness. There is more adventure. There is more fulfillment. And it's just, it's such a mark of your obedience that I almost get the feeling like heaven actually bows before you. It's actually just bows before you just to celebrate who you are and honor your sacrifice and your obedience. And I just, um, Savannah and Juan, eh? yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I prophesied over them last night, but I just want to reiterate what I say, that you are a new generation, an upcoming generation, and you are going to steward something that is going to bring hope for a generation that is cynical and skeptical and unsure of what the things of God even look like, for a generation that have seen their parents and their parents' parents walk through church, as we know church in the, in the way that it possibly can be, who have seen hurt, who have seen shame, who have seen guilt, who have seen all of those things, but God is saying to the two of you, you are on the cusp of something incredibly great. You get to pioneer this new thing that will bring hope to your generation and the generations to come, that will bring life to your generation and the generations to come, that will bring that fire, that fire that burned inside those disciples' hearts on the road to Emmaus. You get to steward that fire and you get to pass it on to your generation and to the generations to come. And you, your choices have been right. You have followed the way of the Lord. If there has ever been an, an eye or of doubt in your mind. God is saying, do not doubt me. Do not doubt the road I've called you to. Do not doubt the place I've called you to occupy. Do not doubt the promise that is over both of your lives. Do not doubt what I'm calling you to steward because it is going to be incredible and you are going to steward the new thing, the new, 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 new. <laughs> we, we have a younger generation that is so hungry for the new of Jesus, so hungry for the new of God and you are going to steward that and you are going to do it so incredibly well because your heart are so tender for Jesus. Your hearts are so just what Jesus is calling for you. And I just want to honor the two of you for everything that you have stepped into, but for everything that you're going to step into in the future. And for myself, as a woman over 50, <laughs> I look forward to watching God move through you and through your generation. And it gives me hope for my children to know that there are people like you who are out there pioneering what God has called for the future. We are not afraid. We are not afraid of the future. We are not afraid. We live in this space where we get to be unafraid of the shaking. We get to be unafraid of what happens in world events. We get to be unafraid of what the media tells us. You know, <laughs> I come from South Africa, and you probably all know it's a fairly broken country, but the point is that some things have happened in our nation, and I've spoken to some people here, and they're like, oh, this is what the media said, and I was like, no, no, that's not, no, that wasn't what it was like. No, that's not what it was about. But we get to live in the space where we have a truth that comes directly from the throne room of God and we don't have to believe in media outlets, we don't have to believe in a news or a source of information that is purely for somebody else's benefit and with somebody else's money behind it. We get to believe in the truth of the word of God, in the truth of the word that says that we have hope, we always have hope because Jesus himself is hope for the future. And it's just, it's such an incredible time to be alive. And you know, I've had people say to me, I had a lady the other day say to me, she's 78 years old and she's just asking God to take her home because she doesn't see any point in being on earth anymore. And I said to her, oh no, oh no, no, you're just beginning. This is just beginning for you. You're 78, do you think that disqualifies you? That doesn't disqualify you. You were born for such a time as this and each and every one of you were born for such a time as this. You've been placed into this community for such a time as this. You have been put on this in this specific place for such a time as this. You are here for a reason. You're not here by coincidence. You're not here by accident. You're not here by anything, anything remotely like any of those things. And I just, I wasn't actually 100% sure whether to share this. Please give me grace for this <laughs> and take it as Julie said. Where's Julie? Wholeheartedly. <laughs> but the, every time I prayed about the harbor, every time, oh my goodness, and now I can't find it. Every time I prayed about the harbor, every time I 
was like, Lord, what am I bringing to you? This is a song, I didn't even know this song actually existed, um, but I think it is um, a song sung by somebody in America. Um, but, and, the, and, and this is, the, the chorus goes, burn the ships, cut the ties, send a flare into the night. <laughs> Say a prayer, turn the tide, dry your tears and wave goodbye, step into a new day. Step into a new day. Step into a new day. And I was like, Jesus, a harbor is supposed to be a safe place for ships. It's not supposed to be a place where ships are burnt and ties and cut are cut. And so apparently the story, the song is based on some general who invaded some way. And in order to prevent his troops from leaving, he burnt all the ships so they couldn't go back. Okay, so let's not dwell on that. Let us simply dwell on this. <laughs> that in this song, what is he saying is that you are cutting the ties and burning the ships of the things of the past, of the things that we have defaulted to as a church body, of the things that we have taken comfort in because that's what we've always known. And it is time to, to cut those ties, to dry your tears, to say goodbye and step into the new day, the new day that God has for each and every one of you the new day that he has for harbor. And I am so excited. I mean, when, when Darren mentioned the harbor fe harvest fest, or whatever it's called, Lynn was like, can we fly back for that? I was like, no, <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> no, we can't, we will have just got home. No, very long way to go. <laughs> but I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for each and every one of you. Um, this lady in the orange, what is your name? Sorry? Christina, Christina. Um, okay, so God just highlighted me, <laughs> highlighted me to you, highlighted you to me and me to you, clearly, because I'm standing up here. But I just want to say to you that, um, that God, I just feel just the presence of the Lord on you today. I just feel just the love of the Holy Spirit. And I just, I feel like such a, like heaven is being so intentional towards you today. But right now, whatever it is, if you're at a crossroads or you're at a point where you're making the decision to cross over or to go in a certain direction, I feel like God is saying to you, um, take the unknown path. Take the, take the uncomfortable path. <laughs> You know, and I just get this picture of this road, this lovely paved road, and it like goes along and it's beautiful and it's amazing. And then there's like this little sort of path to the one side and it's got beautiful flowers, but it's all sandy and there are a few stones and it doesn't look exactly as pretty as the tart road kind of thing. And God is standing in that space and he's saying, Christina, come this way, come this way, come and see what I've got for you. So whatever you're facing at the moment or whatever decisions you, you're having to make, and I feel like there's a part of you that knows deep inside you what the decision is actually, but you also know that it's the uncomfortable decision or you know it's maybe not the popular choice, but I feel like God is on that. Whatever it is, God is on that and he is with you and you're going to see him and experience him in ways that you have never seen and experienced him before because of your obedience to step into what he has for you today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I just bless you with that. In Jesus' name. And this gentleman in the pink, is it a pink shirt? Sorry, we're drinking from the water bottle. You, yes. <laughs> Sorry, the lights are very bright. What is your name? Francisco. Francisco. Okay, wow. All right, no wonder. Um, sorry, no, <laughs> no, no wonder, because Francisco, you know, it reminds me of a monk. And the thing that God was pointing out to me was just the holiness that you walk in, the holiness and the purity that, he, that you walk in, that he sees over your life, and just your obedience and your hunger for him, your hunger and your thirst for him, that you want to go after him so badly, and you just, you want more of him, and I feel like you possibly look around you, and you feel like um, you don't get everything that other people get, and it's almost like God is saying to you, no, it is all available to you. Whatever you want, whatever you ask for, he's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like I see you as a little boy standing in front of a Christmas tree and you're trying to figure out, um, you know, which gift is yours because you, it's probably only one for you kind of thing. And God is standing there and he's saying, no, all these gifts are for you. Everything here is for you. You can open every single gift because they all have your name on them. You don't get to share them with anybody. You don't get to have to give them away. You get to just receive all of those gifts under that tree because that is what God has for you. But I just bless you in that holiness and that purity and that hunger and that thirst that you walk in.
And I just say to you, don't ever stop hungering and thirsting for God because you can never be too greedy for God. Whatever he gives you, there is always more and he's always ready to pour out the more on you. So I just bless you with that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Okay. I'm sure that my time is way, way, way up. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. This lady at the end here with the, like, yes, you, yes. What was your name? Were you at the conference? Yes, I saw you at the conference. You were the lady who stood up um, as walking in the fivefold, right? Okay, wow, all right, incredible. Okay, so firstly, God just honors your courage, your courage in standing up because I noticed nobody else stood up <laughs> and said they walked in the fivefold and there were definitely women in the room who did walk in that. But God just honors your courage in that. And he honors the calling and the anointing on your life to walk in that. And he just says to you today that it's not just, um, it's not just, there's not just one part of the fivefold. You know, I think sometimes we think that we can only be one or we can maybe be two, you know, but actually there are seasons in our lives for those of us who are called into that sort of leadership where we walk in different aspects of the fivefold, where we have different grace on our life for different aspects over the time. And for you, I just feel there is such a grace on your life to walk in everything that he has called you to, to be everything that he has called you to. And I also hear him say, don't feel as though your best years are behind you. I can't see you, so I don't know how old you are because it's very, <laughs> the lights are very bright. So if you're like really young, I'm sorry, <laughs> but your best years are not behind you. Your best years are still to come and there will be no retiring for you. There will only be a refiring and there will be just more. <laughs> There will just be more of a space for you to occupy and more of a more of a calling and more of an anointing and you're gonna walk in everything that he has called you to walk in and there's no holding back. I feel like there's just, there's no end point. You know, there's no like finish line that you get to cross. Um, there is just this like endless vista of, of opportunity and, and, and grace for you to walk in whatever it is for the season that you're in for the fivefold ministry that you are called to. So I just release that over you. I just release the full fivefold over you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and just the wisdom and the revelation directly from heaven to know exactly which office to be walking in and to know exactly which area and aspect that you are occupying at the time that God is calling you to occupy it. I just release the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In fact, I release an ability to you to tap into the mind of God and to actually gain wisdom directly from him like the wisdom of Solomon where Solomon actually tapped into the mind of God God, and he gained wisdom directly from him. I just release that over you in the name of Jesus, that wisdom as a persona will interact with you in your dreams at night, in your visions during the daytime, and in your conversations with the Lord. And people will come to you from far and from wide, as the same as with Solomon, because they will know that you carry the wisdom of God, and they will want that from you. They will want that from you. And I just release you to be able to give that wisdom to whoever comes to you, knowing that it comes straight from the throne room of heaven in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name okay um, who in this house um, is prophetic gift of prophecy or prophet okay would you stand up please all of you and if you even have an inkling you might be prophetic come on guys don't back down you know it says earnestly desire the gift of prophecy right okay so as a prophet, I just want to release a prophetic grace over the people that are standing, whether you walk in the office, whether you walk in the gift, whether you're just beginning, whether you've walked in this gift for the longest possible time. I just release a grace and an ease, and I release a wisdom and a revelation directly from heaven to you that you will not only bless the people in this house with your gifting, but you will bless people who come to you with your gifting. In fact, I decree and declare that people will withdraw 
drawn to this house because they will say that's where the prophets are. That's where the prophecies are. That's where the word of the Lord comes from. That's where we hear what comes directly from the throne room of heaven. That's where those people are who sit with their, with their ears to God's heart, to God's mouth, and they wait for the whispers to come from heaven so that they get to take those whispers with them into the world. And I just speak an increase, just an increase, an increase, an increase of revelation over each and every one of you. I just decree that your eyes and your ears are opened in the name of Jesus, that all of your physical senses, that your spiritual senses, your eyes, your ears, your touch, your taste, your smell, will be in, will, you will see, feel them increase over the coming days, that if you have never smelt the fragrance of the Holy Spirit, you will smell that fragrance now. If you have never tasted the goodness of God, that you will taste that goodness in your mouth, that any veil that has been over your ears or over your eyes will be lifted in the name of Jesus Christ, that any lie from the enemy that has held you back from stepping into this gifting that God has called you to will be broken in the name of Jesus Christ and that you will encounter God in new and new and incredible ways in the days to come, that you will have such deep, intimate encounters with Him that you will literally just pour yourself out on the people around you and they will be able to enter into those encounters with Him alongside you because of the gifting and because of the power and because of the love and the grace and the mercy that will flow through each and every one of you in Jesus' name. So as a prophet, I release a revelation of prophecy and prophetic matters and governmental authority and ability to speak into your region, into your government, into your community, into spaces that you have never been welcomed into before, that the doors, exactly like Darren said earlier, the doors are swinging open. Swing wide, O oh heavenly gates, and let the King of glory come in. Let the King of glory come in. And God said to me before I came here, He said to me, Sally, this is a season where my people are going to experience the full force of the Trinity. You have had seasons where you got to know me as father and I taught you to sit on my lap. You have had seasons where you got to know me as Jesus, as friend, as a brother, a friend who is closer than a brother. You have had seasons where you got to know me as Holy Spirit and you felt my comfort and my advocacy and my power and my might. But you are stepping into a season where you are going to experience the full force of the Trinity. God as one, three in one, coming into this house and there is going to be such a mighty, weighty, intense presence of the Lord in this house that you will be a people known as face down people, people who spend their time just flat on the flat on their faces in front of the Lord because the presence of God is going to be so intense and so strong and so incredible that you will not be able to stand in His presence. You will not be able to stand in His presence, but His wisdom and and His revelation and His governmental authority will come in those face down spaces and places as you are totally submitted to the presence and the might and the power and the will of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Wow, okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and dismiss. <laughs> but we're going to let the worship team just play if you want to hang out for a little bit, just to kind of marinate in maybe the thing that God touched in your heart today, okay? If you haven't gotten your children, please help our, our workers out back there. That'd be awesome. We'll be back here next Sunday. It's going to be an amazing, amazing Sunday. But let's just take some time just in the, the presence of the Lord as, as maybe you need for just a few minutes before you go. Otherwise, you're free to be dismissed. God bless you guys.